Uh, welcome, dear listeners, and in this video we're going to discuss uplift modeling in light of uh, Let us proceed to the notebook. So first of all, we need to do all the setup. Uh, we start with the installing light of uh, VIPIP and importing all necessary libraries to work with in this notebook. So we are starting with uh, downloading our data set. Actually, this one is not a data set for uplift modeling rather than uh, it is uh, a data set for a credit scoring uh, which is a binary classification tasks so this one this one has plenty of uh, different features uh, both uh, numerical and categorical and so we'll transform this data set into uplift modeling one um, so also adding some additional uh, user crafted features and then we can see the distribution of our target variable, uh, which is uh, binary, as I already mentioned. And here we have a significant disbalance in the values of the uh, target variable. So most of the cases are uh, negative in uh, our task. So we want to transf uh, transform this task into uplift modeling. Uh, and in this case, we need to select uh, the split of our data set into treatment and control groups. And uh, here in this case, we will do this using the uh, feature called gender, which represents the gender of the uh, customer. So uh, here we can see the distribution of these uh, of the gender of uh, all customers. Uh, and uh, actually, if we were to uh, conduct a real uh, pilot uh, study, then this uh, split into two groups would be wrong because uh, doing this we uh, do some additional uh, disbalance of feature distributions in our treatment and control groups, and so. Uh, as this uh, data set uh, is not uh, sp specified for uplift modeling, we'll do this to ensure that our target and uh, control groups have a uh, different distribution of the target variable. So as we can see in this output, the uh, mean target variable for the control group is, uh, to, uh, is 0 0.07 and 0 0.09 for the target or treatment group. Uh, so once again, if you are going to conduct your own uh, pilot study, then you should not use uh, any of your uh, features in your data set to split uh, data for two groups. Uh, in this case, we're doing this because we uh, because our data set is not specified for uh, uplift modeling, and we want uh, to have uh, two groups which have a different uh, mean value of uh, our uh, target variable. So then we proceed to uh, splitting our data set to train and uh, subsamples. Uh, this is done uh, a little bit uh, weird because we need to stratify uh, the data set using both our target and treatment group so that the uh, proportion of uh, different target cases and uh, treatment groups were the same in uh, both of our uh, samples. So finally, then we uh, set up our column roles as usually required by li light of female. And here we have uh, an addition to our usual target role. We also need to specify the treatment role, which uh, as it uh, uh, obviously we need to set the uh, marker, uh, the column, which says which objects uh, belong to the control group and which objects belong to the treatment group so that we can uh, so that our model could uh, distinguish between these two and this uh, this one is a, a must so we uh, need to specify it f in order to, to our model to work with uh, the data so then we use after uplift it's a bunch of predefined methods uh, used to uh, do the uplift modeling task so we specify our task, which is binary. Uh, and then on top of the binary classifiers, we will build our models. So uh, this means that we will use the uh, meta learners uh, as discussed in the lecture. So we will uh, optimize the adjusted kinematric. Uh, and we also specify the size of the test group and uh, the timeout to fit in the models. So here we will see a long um, uh, logging message, we'll skip it. Uh, and finally, after our 
after ML uh, finished to train, we can uh, print the ratings of different meta learners trained by the model. Uh, here we can see uh, different meta learners like X learner on, on top of the table after ML, which is the best model uh, in our task, striking the metric of 0.16. Uh, here we can see also different models like X learner on top of different models or even T learners on top of the table of ML, which actually perform worse than uh, our top X learner. Uh, then we can take our best meta learner uh, and uh, fit it separately. Also, we can, um, we can uh, monitor the uh, the process of uh, training and testing of our data using special reports Deco Uplift, which is similar to different uh, reports used in Light of ML. And so we just wrap our uh, best meta learner in this uh, report Deco Uplift class and fit is as usual. So here we can see the fitting process. So let's also skip it. Um, and then we can see the uh, metrics of our prediction. So first of all, we see the rock aux scores for uh, two of our groups, treatment and control. Um, this is the uh, scores of binary classifiers who predict the target variable on these groups. Uh, here we can also see the metrics, uh, the uplift metrics. So uh, the metric used here is adjusted kidney, and here we can see the score of our baseline, which randomly uh, shuffles our uh, customers in the sample. So this is uh, around 0 0.01. Uh, the perfect model, which knows the target variable and shuffles uh, the customers with uh, respect to this value is 0 0.09, and our model is actually somewhere in between. So we can see it's uh, score around 0 0.03 and the normalized score uh, is 0 0.18. Actually, for calculating this normalized score, we use the baseline as a minimum value possible and the perfect model as a maximum value possible. So this value is always between 0 and 1. Um, here we also, uh, after we wrapped our model in the uh, record deco uplift, uh, the automatic report is generated, and here we can see it. It looks uh, quite the same as the different uh, light of ML reports, but we can also see uh, uh, a, new, uh, a new spot here, uh, which shows up the uplift performance of our model. So here we can see the uh, test statistics, which are measured on our test set, uh, such as the number of records in the test sample, the share of treatment group, and uh, different uh, values of target. I mean, overall, the, uh, the test set and mean, uh, mean over to groups treatment and control. This report also plots uh, the uh, uplift curves, uh, as discussed. So, so here we can see the kin curve. Uh, there are also two different curves on this plot. The uh, plot for the random model, which is actually just a segment between these two endpoints, uh, and the perfect uplift model, which is much, uh, which has a much uh, more, much bigger area below uh, this compared to our model. Uh, so the same is the uplift curve, uh, which is constructed by uh, plotting the cumulative gain. Uh, and here we can see the plot for adjusted Kinney curve. We can also see the distribution of uh, uplift predictions by our model uh, with kernel density estimation plot and the uplift distribution by bins if we wish to know the uh, uplift value for different uh, groups in our test sample. So we also sometimes maybe want to specify our custom uplift metric. For example, if we want to maximize the value of uh, uplift for some particular percentage of our clients, for example, here in this, um, uh, in this example, we just take the mean value of uplift at 10 and uplift at 20%. Uh, and then we can optimize after uplift with respect to the specified metric. This is done uh, in the following way.
after we trained this uh, after uplift uh, to maximize our custom metric, we can see the rating of uh, different meta learners. Uh, compared to the previous setup here, we can see that there are much more different meta learners considered. Uh, and also these two last meta learners, uh, uh, the predictions, the metrics uh, of their predictions is, is none because the specified timeout was too low for these models to fit so that uh, we didn't have uh, enough time budget to finish fitting all of our models. Uh, nevertheless, we can see that the best model is S learner with the score of 0.09. Uh, and this is uh, the best model to maximize our custom metric. Uh, if for some reason we don't want to use uh, after uplift with uh, different uh, meta learners, we we may uh, want to train uh, separate meta learners. For example, we can import T learner uh, and uh, optimize uh, this model to our training data set. Uh, so here we can see the predictions of uh, the T learner, which are notably smaller. The, the metric of adjusted kidney is notably smaller than uh, is outputted by the model of um, after uplift. Uh, and there is another option. This is uh, an X learner, another meta learner. We can also specify different models used by this model. So actually, there is uh, outcome learners, which are uh, basic models to predict the uh, probability of um, of our target var uh, variable on the first step. Uh, then the uh, proxy uplift uh, is uh, predicted by these effect learners, which are also tabular after ML uh, in our case. And then the uh, resulting uh, weighted uh, average of two effect learners is controlled via the perspinity learner. It's a different model which predicts the probability that our uh, testing sample comes from uh, the treatment group or from the control group. So we can also measure the performance of this model, which is 0 0.025, which is uh, still better than the T-learner, but worse than the after uplift model, which uh, optimized this, this uh, score. And so that th this X learner is not the best model, the best model uh, with these hyperparameters. Uh, so actually, the model which is found by after uplift is better than this single X learner. So here are the three metrics which are available to measure the quality of our uplift models. These are kini, cumulative gain, which is actually a, a area under the uplift curve, and adjusted kini coefficient. So we can plot the, uh, the uplift curves uh, which uh, are predicted by our model, uh, similarly to the plots we've seen uh, at the report generated by LightAfterML. Uh, and we also can see the uh, uplift uh, at K curve. So here on the horizontal axis, we have the different proportion of considered uh, clients. And on the vertical ax axis, we can uh, see the uplift value. So imagine if we have uh, uh, enough resources of our call center to call to the 30% of all customers, then we'll have the following value of uplift. And the same as uh, different uh, metrics that are already implemented in light HTML, we can measure the perform performance of our model on a custom metric. So here, the same, we have the uh, average value of uplift at 10% and uplift at 20% averaged. And this metric is, uh, we can also um, uh, measure the performance of our model using this metric, and it uh, comes out at the value of uh, 0 0.07. That's all. Thank you for your attention.